complete foolishness. That's what I'm going to talk to you about today. Just utter complete foolishness. Hi, this is Daryl Chesser and welcome back to Sea Life TV. Today, we're going to talk about complete foolishness. That's the name of the uh, writing that I'm going to be talking to you about today. And let's get started. We start with Paul writing a letter, wrote a lot of letters. He's writing it to the churches. <clears throat> and this is in, uh, let me see, this is all the way down in, wow, 1 Corinthians chapter 1. This is going to be a long one, but stick with me because it's good. So he's writing and he says, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with eloquent words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. For to those who are perishing or dying, the preaching of the cross is foolishness. But to us who are being saved, it, or the gospel, is the power of God. And now Paul quotes and writes here, uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, Old Testament. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has God, has God not made the wisdom of this world foolish? This is very applicable, very ac applicable to today's society. So let's read on. For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching the gospel to save those who believe. Foolishness. For the Jews require a sign, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. But we, the believers, Preach Christ crucified. This is critical. This is critical. We preach Christ Jesus crucified. It is a stumbling block to the Jews and foolishness to the Greeks. To we people of the West that aren't Jewish, you know, to the logical, you know, democratic, you know, wisdom, philosophy, education guys. To us, it's just utter foolishness. So, the foolishness of God is wiser than men. The weakness of God is stronger than men. For, he goes now on to talk to them. For, observe your calling, brothers. Among you, this, don't take this personally. This is, this is really nothing personal. He said, but observe your calling, you that are in the, in the body. He goes, among you, not many wise men, according to the flesh, and not many mighty men, and not many noble were called. Ouch. <laughs> that hurts. But let's read on. God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Now, what he's saying here is, the things that we believers do, the preaching the gospel and praying and believing God and hoping uh, for this sky God and his son to save us someday, the end of the world, the apocalypse, you know, judgment, blah, blah, blah. Uh, that's foolishness to them. Now, obviously, it's not foolishness at all. It's brilliant. It is the most magnificent, brilliant plan. Wait a minute. I can get eternal life for doing what? Wait, my sins can be forgiven for doing what? Be believing that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, died on that tree for me? That's it? Yeah. Well, that is stupid. How can that be? There's no way. How? See, that's the brilliance of God. It's foolishness to the world. They say work, 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 earn it. Uh, money is the key. Power is the key. Powerful speaking, education, knowledge. Philosophy, logic, science, medicine, it's all that. And you're going, praise God, that makes perfect sense to the world. 
but the world with all of their wisdom and all of the m many amazing things they can do and, and have done, they, they considered it not worthy knowing God. They considered that's just foolishness. We'll do it on our own. So God said, hmm, all right. Then I'll do my way, which is absolute, utter foolishness to you guys. I'm going to have guys get up there and preach. I'm going to have guys get up there and they'll take offerings and they'll preach and they'll say, God will prosper you. They'll say, God will save you. They say, God will heal you. And even a lot of the church will think these guys are idiots. I'm telling you what, it is the foolishness of God in comparison to what the world is that just absolutely destroys the world system. Because look at everything we have right now. Look at everything we have. I mean, uh, the banking institutions, financial institutions, the medicines, the medical profession, uh, health care, uh, let's just say politics, uh, military, everything. I mean, the education system alone. Holy cow. We spend the most money of anyone in the world per student. Maybe one other country ahead of us but they have a very small group and they have a lot of money. They're not trying to educate as many as we are. And yet, we are way down in the list. I mean, it seems like the more money we spend, the dumber they get. It doesn't make sense. And everything, I mean, everything that you had hope in, everything, even science, you know, they lie to you occasionally, you know, to prove some kind of point. You know, they inflate the statistics. They do this and they do that. And you're going, dude, look, if something's bad, you don't need to be hyperbolic. You don't need to make it worse and lie about it because then we just don't believe you. Just the same way in social media. Look, if you inflate the statistics of what you're trying to push and you're, you're bringing in all kinds of stuff that is not relevant and you conflate it into this, you do that enough and we're just going to go, look, I don't care. Sorry. Well, you hate. No, I'm not listening to you. You've lied to me all the way along about this. I'm not listening to you anymore. You guys are foolish. So that's what's going on. Look around and you're saying, you know what? We've been considered foolish for a long time, but the world right now, I mean, pop everything. I mean, everything is utter nonsense. Utter nonsense. Just foolishness. There's no confidence in anything right now. You, you see the world system is falling apart. So let's go on. God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And God has chosen the base things of the world and things which are despised. Yes, and he chose things which did not exist, weren't seen in this realm, to bring to nothing things that do exist in this realm that no flesh should glory in his presence. Today, none of us here have ever seen Jesus Christ. None of us walked with him. None of us have seen God. Maybe you've had a vision, or maybe you've heard him in your heart or your mind, or a revelation you, you know. but to actually see God, none of us have seen, I haven't seen any angels. I've not seen prayer. I've not seen faith. I've not seen the Holy Ghost, but I've seen the results. And this is telling us that he takes those things which are not seen and by prayer and by faith and by the work of Christ Jesus on that cross and by God's will, his purpose and plan who created the whole earth, he brings into the seen realm the things that we have not seen yet from the unseen world. Where do you think this universe came from? That it always just existed and it just popped? Well, then it came out of nowhere at some point. I mean, at some point, from nothing and from nowhere, where did it come from? Well, it came from, you know, an atom or a cell. I mean, well, where did this cell come from? If there was nothing and now there's something, where did it come from? Well, an alien plant. Again, where did that come from? All right. So, God's chosen the weak things of the world, which is this preaching and praying and lifting our hands and worshiping and being kind to one another to confound the things which are mighty in this world. 
And God has chosen the base, base things of the world and the things which are despised. Yes, and he chose things which did not exist to bring to nothing things that do, that no flesh should glory in his presence. This world's going away. We are in the last of the last days. Let's finish. But because of him, because of God and his plan and his love for you, you're, you're his creation to start with. And he loves you. He said, now today you are in Christ Jesus. If you believe that he went to that cross in his finished work. Today you are in Christ Jesus, whom God has made unto us wisdom. Jesus Christ has been made for us now that we've received him and his spirit lives in us. He is our wisdom. He's been made unto us our righteousness. He's been made to us sanctification and redemption. Therefore, final verse here. Therefore, as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Today we boast in the Lord. We boast that it was his plan, it was his purpose, it was his death of his son, it was his resurrection, it was his doing, it's his grace, it's his mercy, it's his kindness, it's his love. Not my strength, not my preaching, not my great deeds or my great education or knowledge or skillful oratory. I can't even say it. Oratory. Talking. It is not with the things of strength. Our strength is what the world considers foolish, the unseen world. In the name of Jesus, like I bless you today. I bless you and I ask God to bless your family and everything that you have. Now, the world would think what I just did was foolish, but I'm telling you, there's many of you out there that will receive this and understand that is a real thing. Blessing is imparted and received by us doing these things. All right, let's go on. In today's wisdom, or the education and understanding enlightenment of social society, it doesn't make any sense at all to us anymore. You are probably going the right direction if it doesn't make sense to you either. You're just shaking your head going, I don't even understand these decisions. The world, sadly, much of the world's churches look at the cross of Christ as foolishness. They will all glorify good works and piety and proverbial teaching and selflessness of Jesus, but the blood and cross of Christ just aren't on the menu. Our, our gospel in most of our churches, the blood's been removed. And I've got news for you. Without the blood, there is no remission of sins. Somebody got to die. Blood has to be shed. And God determined that would be Jesus, his own son. Mm. We who believe and preach the cross of Christ Jesus understand that it is the power of God and the wisdom of God unto salvation, the gospel. This is the foolishness. It is complete, utter foolishness. This is where I'm going today. To preach Jesus Christ crucified, buried, and resurrected, and by that you can be saved, and your spirit can be changed, your whole flesh can be changed, and that then you'll have eternal life. You'll die here, but then be resurrected. It's foolishness. But we believe it. And it's done God chose to preach this good news. Preach the good news. That's what gospel is. He said, preach the good news. God loves you. God's made peace with you guys. He ain't mad at you no more because of Christ Jesus. He paid for the sin. He took the sickness on himself. He took the lack and poverty and destitution on himself. He took death and sin. He took it all so that we might, by faith in his broken body and his blood spill, might be declared righteous and then receive the grace of God poured out, which is the free gift of salvation, the free gift of not only our sins forgiven and our consciences pu purged from a sin consciousness, purged that we are clean because of what he did then it, it, it will begin to affect your behavior when you know you're loved and forgiven. So let's go on. I want to read Matthew chapter 7. Jesus. 
He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, this is a, ooh, sorry, kicked my camera. Let's straighten that back up. That was just like not perfect. I mean, I'm having my cameraman straighten that up. It's not my foot moving that. Okay. Uh, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? And done many wonderful works in your name. Many wonderful works in your name. Built great cathedrals and great schools and We've stood for people in the streets and we've marched with people and we've done many mighty great things. Great is the Lord and me. But Jesus says, but then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice evil. <laughs> you know what evil is? Not believing the cross of Jesus Christ, the broken body and blood of Jesus Christ. That, according to Hebrews chapter 3, says they had, talking about the children of Israel in the wilderness, they had an evil heart of unbelief. They didn't believe what God said. They didn't believe God would take care of them. They didn't believe God could provide for them, even though all of the things they'd seen and the miracles and the magnificence of God all around them in creation, they didn't believe God at all. So what is the work of God and the will of God that we should do? Jesus spoke these words about it. They asked him, what shall we do that we may work the works of God? Jesus answered, Jesus answered them and said, this is the work of God, that you believe in him, Christ Jesus, that you believe in him whom God has sent. Jesus himself said this to the people of that day. This is the will of God. This is the work of God. Believe in the one whom God has sent. And that was him, self, Christ Jesus, the sent one, the Messiah, the Christ, the son of God, our savior. He goes on to say, this is the will of the father who has sent me, that all whom he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up that last day. This is the will of him who sent me, that everyone who sees the Son, Christ Jesus, and believes in him may have eternal life. This is the will of God, that you believe in Jesus Christ on that cross, his body broken, his blood spilled, and he voluntarily took it to the grave and purchased our redemption and destroyed our sin, and took sickness and death and every other evil thing with him. And God pulled him up out of that grave. It was impossible for the tomb to hold him. There was no way. And he's now seated at the right hand of the Father. So many will do great works and deeds in this day, but if they do not believe in the foolishness of the gospel, of, of the cross, the bloody gospel, Thank you for your good work. Appreciate it. I don't know you. That's what Jesus is saying. Man, I appreciate all that. All the people you fed and all the good deeds you did. That's awesome, man. That is way cool. But there's only one entryway here. And it's by faith in Christ Jesus. Thank you. Thank you for what you did, honestly. I mean that. You got to have the grace of God here on this earth. Some of the good things, the food and the rain and the sun. You got to see the beautiful colors and life and animals and stars and moon. You were living in God's grace. You were given life where, look, in this country, 60 million people never made it out of the womb in the last 50 years. But you're one of the ones that made it through that portal. You're here, you've seen life, you've seen goodness. But the way to that next portal, that next realm, the eternal life with Christ Jesus is faith in Jesus Christ on that cross, his broken body and his blood that he died for you. So God's will for us is believing and preaching Jesus Christ, his son, buried and resurrected. Let me read this to you. This is in John. This is the apostle John. He writes, just as most, I'm sorry, John is writing this, but it is Jesus speaking. This is the gospel of John. 
And, and so uh, Jesus is, is speaking this to uh, the people of that day. He said, just as Moses lifted up the serpent, or, you know, that stick on a cross, or that serpent on a stick or a cross, in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man, Jesus, be lifted up. Hmm. You see, let's just stop right there for a second. This serpent on a stick, you know, sounds like the state fair, snake on a stick. Um, uh, deep fry it, we'll eat it, that's for sure. Uh, but that was the story from the wilderness. When serpents, you know, they're out in the wilderness and vipers and, and uh, you know, bad things started to come in and, and, and attack the people and they were dying and getting sick. And God told Moses, he said, make this bronze serpent and put it on a, a pole or a stick and, and put it in the middle of the camp and tell everyone, anyone who will crawl out of your tent or roll over, have somebody bring you or in any way can get to look at that snake on that stick and see that, you'll be healed. And it happened. Didn't matter what you'd done, if you were worthy or not worthy, good or bad, rich or poor, you got bet. You look at the snake on the stick and you, you're saved. This was the picture of the cross. Jesus Christ becoming sin, taking sin and taking sickness and taking every, every evil thing that the serpent, the devil, has introduced and brought into this realm and, and strung up on that pole. And it was by the foolishness of these people coming and looking at that. That is our victory. That is our victory. Christ on that cross, humiliated, destitute, beaten, bruised, battered, bloody, and, and, and being... Uh, uh, just screamed at and mocked and stripped and spit upon by his own people and by the world. That is what God said. That will be the victory over everything in the universe. Jesus Christ will end it all there. Okay, let me just finish this up. So he goes on to say, just as Moses lifted up the serpent on a stick in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Now you're starting to see where we're at in John. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but through but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in Jesus Christ is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son. He's condemned already, he who does not believe, because he, that's, that's it. Your condemnation, your absence from eternity is based on one thing. Do you believe Jesus Christ on that cross and that resurrection? That's it, that he did it. That's the reason you're there, not you, but him. And you believe that and you receive that. And you say, God, I humble myself. I humble all my ex excellent knowledge and wisdom and logic and, and just me. And I yield and I say, Look, I'm in, dude. I don't care. My logic can kiss off. I believe you. I want that eternal life. I thank you that my sins are forgiven, that my conscience is clear because Jesus Christ did that. He did it. I didn't earn it. He earned it. He paid for it, and I took it. Thank you, Jesus. And thank you, Father, Father in heaven, that, that this was his plan and purpose all along. And so John continues in chapter 12, another, uh, just one of these other verses. He says, if I be lifted up, Jesus is speaking, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men to myself. He said, said this to signify what kind of death he would die. In other words, he was saying, if I be lifted up like that serpent, and it's going to be a cross, 
it's going to be that Roman punishment, capital punishment. And they're going to nail me to that. But when I'm lifted up, he goes, this is the center of the universe. This is the victory over sin, death, and destruction. This is the, this is the, the gateway. I have taken all of that upon myself, and God has judged that in his flesh, in Christ's blood, has done, judged all of it, and given us what Christ should have had. He was perfect. He was healed. He was uh, he had all supply. He walked in protection and, 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 and courage and strength. And now we who were lost in our sin, we're afraid and we're suffering, we're hungry and every other thing. He's given what, what he should have had was given to us. What he did have was given to us, which was he's the son of God. He's not worried about money. We were worried about everything, and he took that. He says, I'm going to give you me. You give me your stuff. I'm going to take it to the cross. And that's what he did. So the ripped apart flesh and the blood of Jesus poured out at that cross was for us. He was lifted up for us. So let us now continue to show him. Continue to. That's not just the starting place. That is our, that's where we live. Let us now continue to show him lifted up on that cross, the bloody cross, a trail of blood all the way through that city from when he first was taken by the Jews and beaten and battered and striped by the Romans. And, and I mean, he was, he was stripped and beaten by the Roman, I think, according to the Greek words there, it was anywhere from like 500 to 1,000 soldiers. And they said they gathered them all around. So, I mean, they took a go at it. But Jesus said, if I'm lifted up, I will draw all men to me. It is preaching that cross, preaching Jesus crucified, him lifted up, by which men are saved. That is utter, complete foolishness. To the world, not to us. Then I suggest, let's be foolish with Christ so that we may also live eternally with him. Complete, utter foolishness. I want to pray for you before we leave. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every man, woman, boy, and child that hears this tape, this taping, whether it's today or, well, any time in the future. I pray that you will impart to them what has gone on in their in their lives, when they received Christ Jesus, when they believed Jesus went to that cross and that he died for them and suffered and poured out his blood for them and went to the grave and was down there and that God pulled him up out of that grave after three days and took him to heaven. And now we wait for his return. But on that day, to any that will believe that and believe and look to that cross, that snake on a stick and say, Jesus Christ I believe and I receive that you did this for me. I want to be saved. I want your salvation. Forgive me. God hears you. You're forgiven. Your conscience is purged. Every sin forgiven. Every sin forgiven. Your conscience is purged. And his Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Christ, begins to invade and come into you and begin to build you up and encourage you and, and strengthen you. And Father, I pray that you uh, fill all of these men and women with a Holy Spirit right now, the power of God, the power of God, the power of God. Acts chapter 10, verse 38 said, how God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all who were sick and oppressed of the devil. I impart to you, be filled with the Holy Spirit right now, in Jesus' name. Now, Thank you, Father, for everything you've done. Amen. So, what do you say? Let's go be foolish this week.